The magnetic method only works if there's a change in the magnetic properties in the rocks in the area that you're studying. An example of this would be if a, there's an intrusive dike in a granitic terrain. The dike is magnetic, but the granites are less magnetic. Another example would be in the Witzwatersram Basin. For example, we have the Hospital Hill Shales, which are highly magnetic, and the quartzites, which are less magnetic. So we can use the Hospital Hill Shales as a marker. In this video, I'll be describing the setup of the magnetic equipment. For a ground magnetic survey, it's absolutely essential that we establish a base station. The base station will record the diurnal variations, which are due to the sun, and it will also record any magnetic storms that we may, might have. The magnetic storms could possibly cause us to have to cancel the survey. In order to set up the base station, we need to set up a bunch of parameters on the magnetometer itself. One of the first of these is to make sure that it's reading in automatic mode, which is set on a bunch of dip switches on the inside of this proton precession magnetometer. The next thing we have to do is check that we have erased the main memory, so we can do an erase mode. And then we have to tune the magnetometer so it's tuned to the magnetic field in the area. And then we also have to set the time, which is really important. The time on the magnetometer should be sent with a handheld GPS so that we can use the time on the GPS for this magnetometer and the same time will go on a rover magnetometer that is out in the field. Once all these parameters are set, we can take the magnetometer and attach it to the sensor also and then the sensor is attached to the pole. And we like to place the sensor in a tree so it's solidly supported and won't blow around in the wind. And also a tree with some thorns in it to avoid having animals come and attack the cable. They like to chew these cables. Once all of this is set up, we can set the time on the magnetometer to take a reading every 60 seconds. Before we start a magnetic survey, we have to make sure that we have nothing magnetic on us. Here I'm using a magnet to test my watch to see if it's magnetic and that I have to remove it. The next step is to open the battery case and connect the battery to the magnetometer. Here I am connecting the two ends of the cable. Once that's done, we have to put the wires very carefully out of the way so that we can close the case without pinching them. We must make sure the case is firmly closed. The magnetometer has been packed away for storage, and so now we need to adjust the sensor and the GPS for the field configuration. This means adjusting the connectors so that the magnetometer and the GPS are as far away from each other as possible. We also have to make sure that the screws are tight so that the magnetometer doesn't fall out of its holder. The GPS needs to be adjusted so that it's in the full upright position and the connector has to be moved to the outside so that it can hold it as far apart from the sensor as possible. We also have to make sure that the cables are secured out of the way and here I'm putting them in a pouch to make sure that they don't get caught on tree branches or thorns. They can be badly damaged when they get caught on trees and thorns. Okay, the next step is to put the backpack on. This is worn just like a normal backpack, but it has some extra straps for security. It's a little bit difficult to do by yourself, but if you don't have anyone to help you, it's certainly possible. It has a waistband that allows you to carry some of the weight of the backpack on your hips. And that's what I'm adjusting here. That should be snugly fitted around your waist. And then there's another strap that holds the controller. And this one should be connected and left loose because you're going to need to attach the controller to it. Now I'm pulling the controller out from behind the magnetometer and it has two hooks that need to go through the black strap. 
You want to do this with the black strap loose, otherwise you'll never be able to get it through the hooks. Once you have it hooked, you can tighten the black strap. On the controller are two short straps that attach to the shoulder. These just clip into place, and so you can adjust those once you have it clipped. This should be fairly tight as it keeps the controller in a horizontal position so you can easily read the screen on the controller. There's also a chest strap that some people like to adjust, but I don't usually wear that. Next you have to find the power cable that goes from the battery because you're going to plug that into the controller. Be careful when you plug that in because it's hard to see when you have it on yourself. Once you clip that into place, you're ready to start the instrument. When we're conducting the magnetometer survey, it's helpful to have somebody walking in front of you with a handheld GPS. This allows you to walk in a straight line and keep moving. The handheld GPS would have the waypoints loaded on it and that person can find the next waypoint while all you have to do is follow along and keep the survey moving. This concludes the video on magnetics.